last time on Lawful Stupid. So, Miss B, you head to a pretty sizable library. Oh, hey there. What can I help you find today? I'm looking for information about the dragons. I don't know. Maybe you'll find something here. And he hands it over to you to read. It says, um, scales not found, uh, rumors that they've been moved, uh, sources of great power left behind, remnants uh, of items that have been affected, have been detained and quarantined for further study. William. I want to go check on the ward. Uh, I approach Kane and say, I'm here for my rounds. William uh, approaches the girl, the creepy darkness girl, the ring girl. She takes a couple steps back and then quickly throws her face up to the window and it's smiling and glowing. Oh, 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 fuck. I want to go back to my room. Who the fuck this place? This place is creepy as shit. And I want to talk to SJ on my way out. Um, what was that all about? I don't fucking know. And I've had it up to fucking here with people lying to me and may- and not telling me why fucking dragon scales glow when I touch them. Maybe Mrs. Beeson's all bad. She did give me these wonderful slippers. See? The bright side of things. It's just been a long, stressful day. He pulls out these slippers and Puts one on. It's warm, right? Because it's not the pair. It's warm. So, like, oh, nice. All right. And then he puts on the second one. God, fuck, motherfucker! Who the fuck designed these? Mrs. B! And the the sound of squish is accompanied with an, a burst of flames around William. And then as the flames reside, nothing on his clothes were burned. But he has this look of shock about him as he looks over to Eshi. And she sits up and she says, I think I remember something. Jump over to Lucian. He's just gonna, gonna walk right into the church, proud as you please. Uh, excuse me, brother. Um, I need you to find your bishop for me because I need to confess. What, what's got you weighted down, brother? Do you ever feel like you're a part of something so big that you can't even see yourself anymore? I think if you zoom far enough away from our tiny planet, it's almost like the gods could take and just crush that into a piece of paper and throw it into some desolate waste bin. What if I told you there was something out there bigger than that? They could fold the gods up like a piece of paper and put them in their waste bin. I would say now you're off your rocker. <laughs> yeah. What do you know about Archbishop Eclectus? And he, he looks at you and then he kind of looks back at that guy who greeted you. That guy shakes his head slowly, no. And he says, uh, oh, I, uh, I, I don't think I know that name. Okay, um, then I just have one last question. Um, what do you know about his son? He never had a son. And these revelations were made known to you. Um, some of the history of the gods. That you had powers beyond anything that you knew you had. And maybe your dad isn't your dad? Yeah, what's, what's, hey, I'm still here with this priest, right? <laughs> yeah. Can, can I ask him to, I don't know, fucking clarify? Uh, um, maybe you should ask the questions. Okay, uh, so you said that, um, his reverence doesn't have a son. Could you tell me one more time, just, just so I'm clear yeah. on your, your father's name? Perhaps the name is, is popular. And- well, he's like, he's like the, po- the Pope of our whole, like, uh, religion. So, like, it'd be pretty weird if you had him mixed up with, like, a different Archbishop Eclectus, because... He's like the one. Okay. Um, h- how about this? I'm going to prepare some things, get some affairs in order, and you come back to me in a day or two. A- and I'll see if what I produce makes any sense to you. I mean... I don't have a whole lot of other options here right now, sir, so your terms are acceptable. And he, as you're sitting there, he turns once again, looks toward the back uh, of this, like, chapel area, uh, and, and nods once again, and the assistant there begins to walk away, 
uh, through a door that you can't see. And he says, so it will be. Uh, I'm just not sure we're on the same page, and I I think maybe this will help clear up some things. Sure, I don't know why we can't just, like, talk about it. Like, it's a little bit weird that you have to, like, put together a whole PowerPoint presentation, but respect. Yes. (laughs) Okay, bye. Uh, as you begin, as you get him to leave, uh, you look back and you see him like hurriedly uh, exiting through a door in the front left of this building, up by the like the altar area. Luke ain't never gonna see them guys again. <laughs> Those guys are in a different <laughs> area code. Those guys are already in a different like time zone and climate. <laughs> They're gone. Mm-hmm. All right, and I, I think after that, where do you head off to? I don't know my room. I'm just gonna like listen to music for a while. Put my head up, close uh, the drawstrings. Uh, <laughs> I might be adopted. I don't know, man. Um, great. You and so you do that. Go listen to some beauty music. I've become so numb. Dear diary, mood apathetic. Uh, I, I think you you spend some time. You, you've perhaps had the night to sleep on it. All three of you. And the next morning, you hear over this this um, intercom system in your room, and Misery says, uh, "Could you all meet me for breakfast?" Uh, of course. Does it is, is is it two way? Yeah. Oh dear God! Has this thing been on the whole time? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only when when you hear me do I hear you. I did not think of it. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Is it four way? Because we're all here. Yeah. Wait, you can hear each other now, yes. Lucian, I'm so sorry. Children should not be exposed to the type of things I've done. First of all, I'm a grown man. Second of all, I might be an orphan. <laughs> sorry about that, too. I bust. That's a lot of news to take over the intercom. Yeah, I was cooking breakfast. Oh, sorry, I hit the four-way button. I meant to hit the one-way. I'll see you soon. Oh, the pancakes. Misery of the pancakes. Twit. Misery of the pancakes, please. I'm gonna go eat breakfast. <laughs> Misery. Pancakes, it'll be. Uh, and you all meet up in the bar, um, which is now turned into some more of a, a breakfast nook place. A breakfast place. bar. Yeah, there there are okay. fruits and uh, things on, on the, the countertop there. The, the drinks behind the bar are like cow's milk and apple juices uh, and that kind of stuff. It's cotton uh, breakfast. Th- yeah, smell is wonderful. It is fantastic here. Do we get to build our own waffles? You do. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, and as you walk Mr. in, Groovy176 is in like this uh, butlered outfit. He's been outfitted now that he can roll around the floor instead of just being on this one oh. track system. Mm-hmm. And he says... Good morning. What can I get for you? Give me uh, one. Uh, ladies first. Wink, okay. wink. <laughs> you don't have eyes. <laughs> so alarming. She's just like, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll go with orange juice and the waffles how I usually take it, please. Beautiful day, isn't it? How do you take your waffles? I feel like I order them enough, but all right. And it has waffles, bananas, whipped cream, chocolate syrup on top. Please and thank you. Delicious. And then he turns to William's character. Um, <clears throat> I'm not usually awake for breakfast. Uh, I'll have a blackberry brandy and steak and eggs. That sounds like it'll work. William, you know we don't have brandy in the mornings. I I don't know that. I I was pretty honest about uh, me not being up this early. Um, uh, fine. Uh, I'll have a mimosa and steak and eggs. Delicious. I bet you say that to all the girls. Uh, I feel like. Th- Lucian gave you a mug of never-ending booze. Mm-hmm. And I feel like 
you really don't like mead and it makes every time you get into a situation where you don't have booze and you don't reach for the mug Lucian just goes he's like my brother um I mean he's drank it a lot in the last adventure okay like a lot okay I feel better now yeah I mean he just that is his default when there isn't booze because he always has it if he has an option he's gonna take an option well, I, I just didn't know if you're... Well, the mimosa is very funny. It's like, you know we don't have brains anymore. All right, I have a mimosa. Just give me alcohol in some form. Yep. It's the breakfast drinky. And for you. I'll have a waffle because I don't deserve pancakes. And I just what? plain because I don't deserve toppings. Explain. It's a plain waffle, man. But have your pancakes. I don't deserve pancakes, Miss B. Explain. I don't. I haven't earned them. Pancakes are for winners with dads. <laughs> now, now. I never had a father. And look at me. And he does like a twist. You're like a robot who serves pancakes, man. So like, I appreciate you, but... What not to want. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We shouldn't order your pancakes, please. I don't want pancakes. Pancakes. Or for winners, that. Uh, and he, he, as you're saying that, he, he wills away. And Mystery's there. She's eating her waffles already. She chose waffles? Does, it, it's not some sort of self penance? I don't get it. She is currently cattailing herself <laughs> as she eats them. One hand, <laughs> yeah. one hand is- Self-flagellation <laughs> and waffles adds up. <laughs> Hot. Um, she says, uh, all right, children, um, get a good breakfast and then uh, we will send you off um, of course we can't talk here I just wanted to make sure you had a full belly before you headed off thanks Wizzy. Uh and so Groovy176 will bring out the waffles um, for everyone with whipped cream chocolate sauce and bananas and then a mimosa with steak and eggs and he brings out and sits in front of uh, Lucian the biggest most beautiful um I hope you like butter because they were cooked with butter on each side too. Pancakes. And in chocolate chips, he spelled out, you're a winner uh, with a side of syrup on it. I might actually cry. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> uh, thank, thanks, Groovy. You're welcome. I guess I did have a dad all along. <laughs> he has a mustache <laughs> on too now. <laughs> Press the shade it on. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> uh, and so y- you enjoy meals and she walks you back up uh, through the elevator because you're in the KG headquarters uh, it is a it's a beautiful day outside and she says um, it's time for you to set off I feel I will be here um, when you find out what Riz has for you please let me know it's been some time since I've spoken with him myself All right, let's start this cool backwards walk about. Real quick, um, I I just need to run back inside real quick. I forgot something. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Great. I need to go to the library. Lucian just lays down, spread eagle on the road. (laughs) 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 Okay. And yeah, what are you doing there? Uh, I am going to find a very specific book. From this note left out by Mallard. And I'm going to open this book. And in this book, uh, I open it supposedly to find a bottle of blackberry brandy and four storm stogies. William puts that in his pack and then runs back out. It's like, I'm going to need this. So studious. Yeah, I love the idea he's putting this book in his bag as he walks out to them like... <laughs> He's got a fucking book. I feel like Miss B has been like looking over Lucian and like digging through her pockets, offering him like trail mix, a banana, curly straw. (laughs) (laughs) I I think she keeps like pulling things out of her bag and offering them to Lucian and he can't see them because <laughs> he's got a blindfold on. Oh, she'll <laughs> describe what it is. Oh, okay. She'll want a band-aid. No. 
<laughs> well, this one has a smiley face on it, though. I don't have a smiley face on me, though. Well, this is why you need the band-aid, so you have a smiley face. Okay, I guess I might as well have one. She'll put it on his cheek. Mm. <laughs> Very nelly of you. <laughs> How do I look? Happy? Your sticker looks happy. Hell yeah. I have glitter. Do you want glitter? No, I'm Sparkle. Fine. It's I don't need to sparkle. All right. Well, if we'll, <laughs> if you're ready to get the show on the road, time is probably of the essence. Lucian, what has got you so down? I don't know, man. It's like my dad. What about him? Apparently, like, he might not even exist. And if he does exist, like, maybe I'm not his son. That seems crazy, but you you all gave up, and she looks at all three. You, the lives you had before anyway, and it you, you're doing it to, to save them. Yeah, that's definitely my reason. Yeah, but if, but it, but yeah, but if because of my choices, if he doesn't exist anymore, did I save him? Doesn't feel like I did. I don't know. Well, why would they not exist anymore? Yep. Yeah. Man, you're so great. Uh, you guys, hey, if you didn't know my dad, he's, um, he's the archbishop. He's the guy. He's the dude. And, like, I went and talked to a priest, and I was like, hey, what do you know about this guy? And he's like, I don't know who my bosses like i don't know who the head of our religion is and i was like oh okay cool so i know miss b has no reason for knowing can i roll a history check does this guy actually exist my dad my own memory yeah does she know of him is the question she's asking not does he actually exist i so what I would wonder about your character is she gosh um, you would see him around and like he would be doing like magical televised televangelical <clears throat> like stuff like you would see you would know I know what the Pope looks like I couldn't tell you his name maybe but I, I know what he looks like I've seen him on TV and shit you know the name it's not unfamiliar but you can't picture him and you're not sure why it's important no, that, that sounds about right for her character. Thank you. I just wanted to know. You know, I know him, and I did not know of you before. Mm. Well, that's cool. I don't know that that's... I don't know that that's um, helping this be... Um, I'm sure you're a legitimate child. It's fine. But he was saying he didn't exist, so that's... Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm pretty not, sure he does. I'm not sure which one's worse, frankly. I'm pretty sure he exists. It's... Uh, whether he owns his child or like accepts him I don't think you own children yeah technically until they're until they're of age yeah they're yours turns out I mean I don't know I don't know about the, about the laws I guess you know more about laws than I would William yeah more of rear them rather than own them you do what uh, no they're usually in front of you I think I mean if you're doing your job right raise yeah. Oh. Mm. Like, with magic? Yes, with magic. Like, from the dead, specifically. Mm Mm-hmm, specifically from the dead. Well, that's how you you keep them safe. You just, uh, you know, bring them back from the dead if they die. Nova says, hate the necromancy, not the necromancer, so... That's fair. I I accept you as you are. True that! What? (laughs) I said that's true. That? Right there? True. Good point. She's trying to be hip with the times. She mm. is trying to be hip replacement with the times. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're smiling again. Uh, At my spits. Oh, I'm not. I said that dead back. I'm gonna miss you all. Just me. Are we not coming back? <laughs> you'll come the back. way you said that is uh, made me think we might not be coming back. What is this the way back. you miss somebody when they go away for a little while and then come back? Oh, All right. I, I have these right. for you. And she pulls out individualized baggies of cookies. Two or three oh, yes. each one. Hmm. 
You know, Misery, I'm impressed that you get them to look like us. That's impressive. That's some age cookies I, uh... I, I tried to get your likeness in them. I've, I make good cookies, but shaping them can be a little uh, difficult. I mean, they look great. I think. I, uh, uh, Lucia, I hope you don't mind. I made two with your eyes that can be seen, and, and two with your your pillowcase around your head. Thanks, misery. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm just gonna start walking backwards. His head yeah, probably just walk backwards, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably just walk backwards. Does it work when I look over my shoulder and walk backwards if I'm if I'm blindfolded? Um, it, if you were blindfolded, you would see it. Yes. Okay, I'll probably take my blindfold off so that I don't get lost in the magic <laughs> journey. <laughs> yeah, um, and so I, I'm not going to do a whole lot of crazy stuff for you. You you look backwards and you walk backwards the entire time. We relay to each other everything we discover on our individual... Like peripheries? Yeah. Or... It researches. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what... What, what Miss B found in the library, and what William found. What did you? I don't know where your pick went. So what? So hey, what did, what did you guys find out? Probably better stuff than me. It felt like a dead end. There's no need to talk about it. Okay, cool. <laughs> what about you, William? You find anything neat? Um. Yeah, these dragon scales are pretty important. Cool. We need them. Okay. How many does KNG have? Uh, two. Five, probably three. Well, well, it depends on your definition of of have. They're holding one of mine. Well, okay, so. So they have two. I have one. We need three more. We'll pretend possession is nine tenths as long. We'll say the KNG has three, right? And you're part of KNG, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. That basically means you have three right now, as long as we're part of the KNG. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, (laughs) with that in mind. Mm-hmm. KG is holding on to three of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, cool. that's and there's what, the case. six total because there's there's six gods. That makes sense. Yeah. So mm-hmm. three are missing. Yeah, that sounds about yeah, right. Uh, we got, got, but we've got pretty good leads on two of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. One's in like an earthquake town and one's in like some other place. Right? Yeah. I believe like a business area. <laughs> it's just in an industrial park downtown. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, at one point, you guys are walking, and there is a fairly large river that runs uh, kind of right through the middle of this portion of the continent. Um, and it is an old bridge, very old bridge. And so it is enough for one of you to go through at a time. And so, I would like for you to tell me who is going to go across first. Who should go first? He's spry as fuck. If something goes wrong, he should be able to get out of it pretty easy. Okay. Uh, And as you approach the bridge, you see the ropes. Uh, It's a rope bridge. Uh, Wooden planks. Some are missing. Cracked. Just very old, it seems. Um, Dips pretty low as it crosses the 30-foot distance from one side to the other. And the drop below is about 200 to the water. So pretty, pretty a steep cliff face here. And uh, do, you me, do you need me to roll something? Or? Yeah. So uh, as you begin to make your way across, I would like for you to roll. Um, uh, how far are you going? Are you are you ta- are you taking it slow or are you just normal pace? And you're still going backwards, correct? I I, th- I think that Lucian, especially because we just leveled up and your boy took another level of monk. Uh, I feel like he feels very sure on his feet. I feel like. He's got a lot of command and control over his body, and he's just going to go like normal, just steady and fluid. Okay, at one point, you, you're stepping very, very solidly. Um, but there's a piece of wood that's just, this is the, the camel's camel's hair on it, right? And so any any motion on it is going to set to crack. So I'd like for you to roll a deck save as you step on this board backwards. Um, I guess I'm, you, stand, you can stand the balls of your feet, or if you're flat foot, I don't know how you're doing it. Uh, I tell you what, if I'm successful in this deck save, I'm just going to do, like, a backflip. That's what I think. Uh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I rolled an 11. 
Okay, so you step down, and you think you're doing very well, and the board cracks, and your foot falls into it. And you are able to grab on to a piece of the piece of wood that's in front of you. But you begin to hear it sort of straining under the weight. Of, of yeah, the I think that in this moment, uh, something very unique happens that hasn't happened to Lucian ever in his entire life. Um, kind of like from above him materialize these gigantic like they're they're like arms they're like human man arms with fists and fingers and uh they are just black like the night sky but just littered with a thousand million stars and cosmos interweaved and they like float they materialize above him and kind of float down one slaps him on the back of the head the other one reaches into his pocket pulls out a cigarette puts it in his mouth the other one comes out and lights it and then they kind of like rest and and they come to rest and like being over top of lucian's arms and his just reach is extended to 10 feet and he can use wisdom instead of strength for any checks and i think he just reaches up with his new spectral arm and pulls himself onto the bridge um were either of you other two <laughs> having to be looking back at this time uh yeah i'm watching this then go ahead <laughs> 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 and I think that happens and he just like looks very strangely for a second he's like puffing on the cigarette that's in his mouth now and shrugs with giant arms and just keeps walking backwards <laughs> oh and you'll, you'll note that the light in his eyes has diminished slightly since he's uh, unbl- blindfolded mm. Mm. that's new right he says yeah. to Mrs. B. No, nope. Says to Mrs. B. <laughs> okay. You're okay. across the way. Yeah. yeah, that 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 looks new. I don't hmm. know what that is. And I don't like it either. It's weird. All right. Would you like to go first? That way I can keep watch on you. The uh, no, prefer not. Actually, when you say it that way, after what happened to him, now nah, that seems weird. I'd rather see if anything crazy happens to you. Yes, but if the bridge gets weaker each time we cross it, then uh, you should probably go first since I'm rather dexterous. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm a pansy man. I'll go across. Uh, okay, and you are able to see... You, you take the exact steps that he's taken. I think Lucian will, like... Beca- is, is there, like, a big, like, point where the boards are missing now? Or is there, like, a gap? Yes, there's a gap now. Yeah, I think Lucian will stay there to help William across maybe? Do you need that help or are you good? I think I'm fine. I don't know. We'll find okay. out. Then I'll, then I'll just keep trying. <laughs> that way we don't have that much weight on it at once. Yeah, so yeah. That's that's dodge. the fear. Yeah. How long is this bridge? It's 30 feet across. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I, I think you're able to avoid the the one place that was weak that Lucian uh, was also across and I guess when you're halfway across Lucian, are you off at this time or are you going just all the way off? Yeah, I'm just going to come off of the bridge and just, like, wait there. Okay. Um, and then... Miss B, you're yeah. up. Okay. She'll go across. Okay. Shouldn't be any problem. Um, and I think as you step over the the big gap there, you... Um, that board is as weakened as William has gone across. And go ahead and, and roll a deck save for me. The DM doesn't like you guys. Fifteen? Yeah, I think you you step in the middle, you hear it crack, um, but you're able to... uh, You're not putting all of that weight on that foot, and you're able to jump back quickly, remain backwards, and then finish out the rest of the bridge to the other side. And you notice that on this side of the bridge, it's the the rope is almost completely worn down. (laughs) There's like one... Uh, strand or one cord of that rope that has been twined that is barely holding on to the other side. Can I cast mending on it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just cast mending on it so that like, if we had to come back this way, it's not fucking wrecked. <laughs> Perfect. And you do. And, and, the, and the, the rope weaves itself back together very strongly uh, to the post uh, that it's tied around and attached to. Okay. You beat my rope puzzle. Yay. <laughs> I just walked backwards. <laughs> That's I just have I just have big arms now. Yeah, I'm still the same. How long does this last? Ten minutes. It's weird. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't really. Um, I don't have an answer for this one. You want to? You want to talk about it? Why are they or all we dark? Just pretend that it's not a thing. I mean, we can definitely talk about it. I just uh, well, so like when I go to my mind place, um, mm-hmm. where I go to recover my key and generate my light in the vast void of darkness that is my inner self. It kind of looks like this, but it's just like one light. This looks like a million billion of them. So it's probably just like really zoomed out all of Nova's light and glorious creation. Hmm. No, that's probably fine. You're right. Mm-hmm. Probably nothing to worry I mean, that's, about at all. My, I mean, it's definitely like, it's, it's, this, I used key to do this. I can feel that. This is like, my power that I've studied and meditated for manifesting itself in this new and interesting way. Hey, no, I get it. Don't don't be worried about it. It's fine. I don't know why they are so mean to me. Uh, they do seem my own arms do appear to hate me. <laughs> um, and you can see that like every now and again, like one of the arms will just like drift over like pinch loose on the cheek and he goes, ah, and he realizes it and like makes it go back down. <laughs> Well, that's not very kind of your new arm. Well, they're new, so that's um, you know, you gotta work the kinks out. He kind of just like crosses big arms, like tucks them, like so they can't get into any trouble. He just looks giant across his chest. If they ever come undone, Miss B is going to try and hold one just to see what happens. That's fair. I'm going to keep. I'm going to try to keep them tucked in. DM, <laughs> do I need to make a roll for arm tucking? No. I mean, <laughs> okay. I guess in sixty, you, you really have to. In sixty, you probably do, right? What do you call that? A sleight of hand, probably. Slight of slight of large <laughs> Cause, well, arms. Because my hands are constantly sliding me. So it, let me let me see if I'm getting this that's some right. sexy fucking rationale. Yeah. <laughs> if I've ever heard it, because your hands are sliding you. <laughs> let me let me make sure I'm getting this right. So your arms are, is it kind of like there's almost like this, this magical sleeve that's very similar to your arm, but like just huge and masculine. No, so let, let me. In. Uh, I would like you to imagine a man that looks exactly like Lucian, but doubled in all dimensions. That's the size of the arms we're talking about. They're big arms. Um, and so, like, those arms are, like, hmm. superimposed over his arms. So, like, they come, like, way up his shoulder. They have almost, like, a, um, like, what you would maybe see on, like, knight's armor, which is, like, uh, oh, yes, almost like a cage. It's, like, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, like, like, t- per- perpendicularly lined pieces of mass. Uh, it, w- it would be metal if you were wearing, like, gauntlets. But, okay. uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's made out of this, 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 this. It, what looks like, I mean, the cosmos. It looks like space. It looks like you know. There, there's. If you looked closely at his arms, they're actually constantly always in motion. There are like meteorites that are dancing across in like this night sky cosmos. There are stars that are supernovaing and imploding, and it's like the, it's like a real time snapshot of the cosmos, but just like as a sick 3D skin on your weapons. <laughs> like that's pretty okay. good. Okay. Is that, is that cool? Is that? I love it. Okay, I just want to make sure I was describing. But right now, the, he's got these giant arms that are superimposed. He's like a little they're body, so like, folded. so they're they're not so long that like they would like his knuckles would drag across the ground, or that he would like run on his hands. Mm-hmm. He could do like a sick back handspring, but uh, he's not like running on his hands or anything like that. But they are like much longer, like down, like past his knees. It's like they're like they're, they hang much lower because they're just big old arms, and he's got them crossed mm-hmm. right now. I need that. I need to see that. <laughs> over his, cross, uh, crossed over his little body, which actually like makes it like this big fucking barricade for him. He feels very protected <laughs> and safe right now as he hugs himself. I love it. Self-love. Self-love. The biggest kind of love. Yeah. One thing we love at Lawful Stupid, among the other things we love at Lawful Stupid, is spreading the word about your business. Or maybe you want to tell your sweet, sweet grandma that you love her for the world to hear. We want to give you that chance. If you're a business and want to get your services on the air, or just want to tell a loved one a personal message, head on over to lawfulstupid.org forward slash message in a bottle. There you can take around 250 words to say what you want. Business ads are $20. Personal ads are 10 Tell the world what you have to hear with Lawful Stupid's message in a bottle. All right, 
uh, and you, you're walking backwards, and I think you are successful. Uh, like I said, it's about a day's journey backwards that, you, that you're, and you're getting closer all the time. Um, and this tower growing larger and larger as you, when you see it first time, you see it stretching into the clouds. Um, and there seems to always be clouds around. It never seems like, even when the sky is clear, it's like there are clouds surrounding this, this tower. And as you come into about 100 feet of it, there are no trees surrounding this area, but you notice that it is set right in the middle of this lake. Now I gotta swim backwards in a lake? <laughs> so it sits atop like a small, very small piece of land. Um, I mean, the, the, the circumference of this thing is gigantic, but w- what land sticks out around it is, is not much. Um, and yeah, so it, it has about a 40 foot uh, or 50 foot distance from the, the bank that you've landed at. Um, crystal blue water, you can see all the way to the bottom and out to this island. I would never want to impose on you, William. Um, but only one of us has to swim. If you make that disc of yours, that floating disc, uh, we could just hop right on that. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, I'll summon up a floating disc as a ritual. Oh, he still can! Oh, I didn't know! I was trying to force the issue. <laughs> so he uh, spins that up and, you know, takes off his jacket and Leaves his, takes off his vest, takes off his. No, does he have a tie? I can't remember. Yeah, he has a tie. I'm an idiot. Yeah, of course he's got a tie. Yeah. yeah. He's not yeah. a monster. I'm looking at the sticker. Yeah, I was like, he's, <laughs> he's not, not a, a fucking monster. He's an Atego uh, so, gentleman. So he takes off. Illusion, hold on to all your stuff. Just keep it yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, do the backstroke. You just tell me when I get close. I don't want to hit it. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking over my shoulder the whole time. I'm guiding him. Yeah. And so basically, mm-hmm. they stay, uh, I think it's 10 or 20 feet. Yeah, we just like tugboat behind him. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it works. <laughs> and you, you get across. Away. Um, you're able to get out very easily onto the land. I'm guessing you press the digitation. Boom, try this. Yeah, I'm oh. dry again. That's the that's the humor. And then I put my clothes yeah, yeah. back on. And, like, uh, and mm-hmm. this comes across. You guys get off. And there is a large wooden door. It is in front of you now. I'd well, I say it's, beh- it's behind you. But. Oh, yeah. Are we ready for what lies on the other side of this? Is there any markings or inscription or anything like that on the door? Yeah, and or actually, door, so as a, a rat, so it's like one of those like circle around the top doors or yeah. uh, oh, really? an arch. Is what you're yes, about? an arch as it were. Thank you. And there are around the border of that arch pictures of like dragons flying uh, men fighting in a battlefield um, mm-hmm. then at the top there's kind of like someone with like their hands open um, kind of like a larger picture than all of the others that you see uh, as it continues to go around you see like those same men on the other side of the battlefield like laying in, in, in a field um, and then the dragons continue to fly around it even continues down to the bottom, to the ground, and around the circumference. If you were to follow it around, you would see there are there are more pictures as it goes around. That's not full boating at all. <laughs> I think as there as as Lucian's taking in this like pretty heavy scene with like this kind of runic and mysterious carving, uh, he begins to just giggle softly uh, as his as his two hands begin to tickle him as he keeps in the frost. <laughs> Uh, and and he just <laughs> dissipates them. He just shakes them, and they fade away <laughs> into just like I don't know, black smoke, dust, All right, and stardust. Is there a door knocker? There is uh, a large golden one, almost like mm-hmm. your hand can't even go around uh, this one. He got rid of the big R. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I yeah no, I would have done it. No, they were tickling me. Sorry. I just I still have my arms. They're pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I get on my tippy toes. And well, you could hands. stand on the disc. I could move it over. It hovers five feet oh, off yeah. the ground. Well, you'd have to like go twenty feet. Or, that's fine. 
No, I can move it with my hand. It just, if I walk away from it, it tugs away. It, just, okay. it tugs with me. Hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll help uh, with the knocker. Yeah. Yeah, use this as a. Okay. Use the knocker. Use this as a stool. Use this as a knocker. Okay, uh, and so you stand up on the disc and you're able to <laughs> knock three times on this wooden door and it creaks open. Do you I, think we still have to walk backwards going inside? Probably, probably through this, the threshold and then we can turn around. This is fucking terrible. My neck is in a crick. I hate it. <clears throat> Why is your neck in water? What? Southern crick, slang brought you by. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's I a creek. It. <laughs> okay, so we walk in backwards, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it the <laughs> it disappears. You're supposed to walk in forward, and then when Fuck. you look over your shoulder, now <laughs> no. zero. <laughs> uh, no, you you walk in uh, as you turn and and walk forward. You're in the building now, and there is an elaborate staircase, um, white stairs, kind of gold railing. It's it's pretty bright in here, not bright enough to where it hurts your eyes. It's a, it's a beautiful scene inside this tower. Um, there are some paintings of of, of dragonborn. And kabolds like serving them fruit and like grapes and leaf, you know, leaves uh, blowing at them. Um, and then there's kind of some more of those elaborate scenes of like actual dragons uh, breathing different types of fire. Um, just, just kind of placed around as you would walk up uh, this staircase. Um, as you get to the top of the staircase, there's like a, a hatch and a, a door above you is closed. I knock on the hatch. <clears throat> Shave on a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> you do. And something flings that door open very quickly. Um and you're you're the one who's like have knock on it, so you're right there, Lucian, is that right? Sure. You're face to face with a blue dragonborn and you can feel the heat of his from his breath on your face and he says what took you so long and he grabs you reaches down and grabs you and picks you up and gives you the biggest hug yeah I'm not used to walking backwards (laughs) so badly and then he kind of touches your neck on each spot and you feel that Uh pain go away oh Sorry, it was necessary. Hey guys, come on up. It's a cool guy. Um, do you, do you both go up? Yeah. Sure. As you go up, he, he kind of looks at you both in a big smile, with those sharp teeth look at you, and he runs over and grabs you both as well, mm, and he's no, probably seven that. feet yep, tall. Pass. Yep, pass. Yep, also pass, please. Yep. So, so I imagine he tries to grab you and you guys just they duck just him. Duck. And yeah. now he, he pulls the Lucian and he's hugging himself. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, we, okay, I guess that's fine. Yeah, um, we don't know each other at all, so that seems very weird for you to come in with a very warm hug. Uh, hard pass. Respect my space. So he says, uh, oh, you still don't remember that's okay is it okay because uh, <laughs> I don't think it is okay if we don't because I like to remember yeah. all my memories mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um not fair we we have a lot I, I've been tracking you for some time um the little spiders that you have seen and sometimes oh. and he looks at he looks at Miss B he says smashed on occasion uh, uh, were mine and he kind of pulls his hand over to motion to this table uh, against a far wall that has covered like, in spiders yeah a bunch of like l- l- like metal spiders mm-hmm. yes. Just spiders yep robot uh, spiders like make it better Miss B is like slowly putting her hands to where she keeps her daggers <laughs> like I, think I don't like this Lucian's slowly raising his hands into the beat you the fuck up position <laughs> No, no. Misery sent you. I'm your friend. This, this, I don't mean you any harm. 
It's a weird thing for a stalker to say. Mm-hmm. <sighs> like, you know, friends is a two-way let's street. Start, let's start with names. Hmm? Yeah. That's oh, no oh, ours. I, I am Riz. Servant of Pogoma. Okay. Child of Pogoma. Right, Child so let me talk Pogoma. to your boss okay. if you're a servant. I'm... <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, his you boss is a, is, a, is a god, William. Uh, is, yeah, uh, his no, I stand by what I said then. Slash Perfect. Mom. Okay. Let me, let, me talk to, let me talk to who's in charge here. I, I'm in charge. Mm. Confident, I, li- I like it. Uh, yes, I I appreciate that about you as well. Um, I'm Riz, uh, Dragonborn, as we put. We we worked together a, a long time ago, a, a really uh, long time ago. Well, I just turned nineteen, so yeah, he would have been a baby then, minimum. Did I? Did I? help you fight a great evil as an infant. Yeah, were we changing diapers when we killed these evil things? Yeah, because I, I would probably make a boom boom if I were to murder an ancient evil. <laughs> what is a boom boom? Oh, it's it's uh, it's a hot brown. Hot brown downtown. Mm-hmm. You mean poop <laughs> your pants. I get it now. Well, if I was a baby, yeah. If I was a, if I was a baby infant when I was and I just killed the ancient primordial evil, yeah, I would probably make a boom boom. Well, relative to Miss Beatrice here, you are a, a, a baby of sorts. Well, no, I'm an adult man of 19 years of age. But in this time, in long, long ago, if I was doing stuff with you, I would have been a baby then. I. I've missed you so much. It's <laughs> it's so good to see you all finally. Uh-huh. I, I still don't even know who you are, even though you claim to be from. I our I'm past. Riz. I'm a blue dragonborn. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do we know you, no. Riz? <laughs> How do we know you, Blue Rizberry? The the details <laughs> are a little mucky, but we we were a, a team. We 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 fought together. Yeah, when was this? Before the blossoming. Yeah, so here's the thing about that. Wasn't alive then. No, not even a little bit. Wasn't even... My line hadn't begun. (laughs) My Uh, entire ancestry was pretty... wishy-washy at that point. Kind of rubs his face. Uh, He had a hood on before, and he pulls that hood back, and he's got like this rather large like blue spikiness that starts just at sort of at the back of his head uh, and goes down his spine it disappears into these brown robes he's wearing and he says you all might want to uh, take a seat Lucia drops down immediately crisscross applesauce he says oh no 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 uh, uh, by the, the fire much more comfortable over there you know he scoots on his arms still <laughs> keeping his legs crisscross applesauce over to the fire <laughs> and as you begin to walk over you didn't notice her at first but there is another person in this room oh cool who the hell and is it? you see the back of her head as she faces the fire that is against one wall uh, and you notice that she has this this reddish hair uh, in braids the girl says aren't you going to introduce me Riz and he says, oh, uh, I'm so sorry. And as she stands up and turns to face you, you see this redhead with uh, freckles on her face. And she has a sword slung over her back. And he says, uh, this is my acquaintance, Alaria Foxwood. And that's where we'll end the episode. What? It's only 46 minutes, seven. Yeah, we got 15 more to All go. All right, cut that out. Devin. Pause. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> you can end the episode wherever you want to, Devin. You're the boss. No, it is too early. I think I just saw the wrong numbers. I think I saw 56 instead of 46. Now we're kind of almost out of time. I guess yeah, now you, you can probably just end the episode, and then we can do another one. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. I think that's the video. Actually, Jinj, yeah. I double lied. Go end back where we said not to. Jinj, just leave it. it all in, just so <laughs> yes. we understand that this is all no. stupid, and this is how no. we operate. No. 
I will not yep, be made to pay for my sins. Audio. No, Ginge. Keep it all. Ginge, don't listen to your wife, To be fair, Devin is in charge since he's a DM, so he gets to make that choice. <laughs> it's true. Devin, you have creative license. Let me look at the 60 rules right real quick. Let's see. What does that say? Oh, don't look at that page. It's blank. blank Weird. <laughs> it's, it says uh, <laughs> that, right you know here. What? That track. It says, Keep it. it says sexy goblin question mark. <laughs> question mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody thanks for listening to today's episode i'm not sure what's gonna post and i can't wait to listen to it um episode 25 coming at you um i just hope you're having a good time i don't know if you are but we're gonna pass it on to the next person who's gonna tell you about something that's going on in the life of lawful stupid Hey, everybody. You know, there's ways you can support us in the show, and we talk about them all the time. And I'm I'm literally here to shill uh, items at you in regards for money. Usually it's like shirts and shit. But this time I want to talk about something different. I want to talk about a new sponsorship friend. A sponsorship mm. ally to uh, Lawful Stupid, as it were. Um, it's Dice Envy. Hey, you <laughs> Dice Dice Envy, uh, they make dice, and you'll be envious of them if you don't buy them. Um, so you can go to Dice Envy through our uh, link in the description, which is diceenvy.com backslash lawful stupid, or you can go to our website and go to our affiliations page, click through there, um, and you can get some really cool dice. Uh, my favorite set that I actually uh, I have something similar to them but I don't have dice in these yet because they're fucking sold out but it's called a green dragon mm. and it, it is so good so you go I, I describe it uh, but I won't do it justice but it's like a green and purple type of mix I'm gonna do it anyway you gotta go look at with, them with you gotta go look yeah at them. you gotta go look yeah. they're really good and they're sold out but there's other really good ones on there if you like metal dice if you like other dice um absolutely there's a purple dragon that's available hold on anyways uh i'm i'm not gonna spend all my money uh tonight on them but you can um if you you help support the show to spend it (laughs) yeah (laughs) confirm you will help me buy dice (laughs) (laughs) um however if uh those dice are too pricey for one dollar at uh patreon.lawfulstupid.org you can support our show uh, and you don't have to buy metal dice at like what 20 40 60 dollars I don't know they're they're very pocket heavy don't like them uh, however unless you're me I have like all metal dice that's how I live my life um, otherwise come support us nice you know what dice roll is always worth the price you roll for humanity mm. now uh this month roll for humanity is going to be head nope to support the uh america's forest fire relief that's r-e-l-e-a-f uh and they are they you know what the fires come in and they burn up all the trees and we need them trees mm-hmm. for breathing and whatnot yep so they come up behind the fire and they go, <laughs> we gonna play a little trick on you. You plant new trees. <laughs> Got them. Take that fire. Uh, so we need to support them and their stealth rolls against uh, flames. So uh, join me in rolling for them. Roll for humanity. I roll right now. Let's see what we get. We got a ten ski. A little ten ski, little tenor. Uh, all right. That's all right. Be all in there. Roll pretty good pretty, pretty middle good. road yeah Phil, it's exactly uh and we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna keep going for them all month and uh you can too so let me know what you roll tell me what you roll coward no one's told me i've been shouting at you to tell me what you rolled literally no one has approached me it's like hey let me tell you what i've rolled zero people uh zero out of all of them so uh really starting to lose faith in people just in general, get pretty so. bad Mm. Pretty bad out here. Fucking bleak. <laughs> so uh, yeah, help, help me. This is a cry for help me, please. Uh, tell me what you rolled. Uh, and as always, I'm going to end this episode on a good news story. Um, I'm just going to read the the headline here: stunning cafes that make you feel like you're stepping into a comic book while you dine. Yeah, um, what they don't tell you is if you do that, you're a fucking nerd. <laughs> That's it. He just stops. <laughs> That's it. I agree. Man, uh, I guess, like, 
order of operations, I have to take it to the fact that your girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, will die. And she'd be like, oh, bad things in comics will happen to you. But that's what I thought Dwayne was going to do. So, like, my next step above that was going to be the fact that uh, comics are dead. Nobody buys them anymore um, or Fast. reads them. And all the writers are bad and they sabotage every one of their fans. And I haven't seen anybody walk into a comic book store, even though I have 20 long boxes full of comics in my basement. I haven't seen anybody walk to a comic book store in uh like four years so like uh yeah comics are dead so if you walk into a cafe that puts you in a comic book it's just the dead zone you're gonna die it's just people talking about deadpool (laughs) this got real dark um it's just people talking about our sponsor (laughs) comicbooks.com for just fucking forever you keep on code uh lawful stupid chimichangas huh xd random so mad hey everybody thanks for listening we love you hey hey no Avon gets to taste the story too oh yeah oh, I didn't know where, you know, <laughs> I didn't know, you, know you know what no I'll do I'll do a did you know because we hardly ever see Ginger on the show he goes to comic book stores and he buys comic books but do you want to know what comic books he does the, buy the only Ooh. comic book that I know that I know anyone is buying nowadays is Turtles is it Turtles no what is it I was gonna say Sonic so. the Hedgehog. Okay. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's so the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, and Sonic would be the third. Like they're like not even anything that's like not a superhero in the fucking lot. Like, but like these weird offshoots are kind of keeping comics alive. Hmm. Yeah. So talk to Ginger in the Discord server about Sonic the Hedgehog. He'll probably love it. Ping him. Do read, it. Re- read all of Ginger <laughs> T. Loaf's Sonic the Hedgehog erotic fanfiction uh-huh. at sixty nine dollars here. Can we do like Ginge fan fiction? Like it just starts right there, and where he's no, sitting first at work. Of, first of all, you don't you need to keep your eyes out of my dream journal. Second of all, just keep my pretty name out of your mouth. Sorry, and uh, okay. We love you. We love, we you. love you. We love Bye, you. Bye. Because we're on video, so you have to wave now, Devin. Devin, you have to wave now because we are on video. Goodbye. Hooray. Don't make it weird. Please. Please, I'm begging you. Please don't make it weird. I have a family. Please don't make it weird.